Have you ever wondered how accurate you are when you are measuring things around you? Sometimes the measurements are given in whole numbers, sometimes they are given in decimal places, and even when you are giving numbers in decimal places, sometimes you use two decimal places, sometimes you use three decimal places. Will the same technique be applied in measuring distances in spaces? And how is mathematics going to help us in all these contexts? And that is what we are going to see in this video today. Welcome to Ganitika.com, a website for mathematics lovers, learners and leaders. And in today's video, we are going to see about numbers and how to approximate different types of numbers in different contexts. So we will see how to round off whole numbers, how to approximate decimals and how to write numbers in certain significant figures, say for example, three significant figures or two significant figures like that. So let's proceed now. So the first thing we are going to do is rounding numbers. So rounding numbers means we have whole numbers where we can round it off to nearest 10, nearest hundreds, nearest thousand, etc. First, let's see how to round, it, round off a number to nearest 10. Consider the number line. Say for example, we have numbers from 30 all the way to 47 and so on. There are numbers in both the sides. So I'm just representing these numbers here for uh, us to see clearly. In this case, if we have numbers from 35 to 44, these set of 10 numbers can be rounded off to the nearest 10. So the nearest 10 in this set of numbers is 40. So all these numbers from 35 all the way to 44 will be rounded off to 40 when I want to round it to nearest 10. So 35, 36, 37, 38 and 39 are on the left side of 40. 41, 42, 43, 44 are on the right side of 40 and these set of 10 numbers will be rounded off to the nearest 10 which is 40 here. In the same way if you have numbers from 45 to 54 the nearest 10 in this context is 50. Therefore all the numbers from 45 to 54 will be written approximately as 50 if you are going to round it off to the nearest 10. In the same way on the other side of the um, number line 25 all the way to 34 will be rounded off to 30. I hope you understood this, but let's check whether you understood it or not. So, round it off to nearest tens. I'm giving you a pause. I hope you are able to find the numbers which are nearest 10 to these numbers. 39 rounding off to nearest 10 would be, that's easy to identify, it's 40. Very close to 40, therefore this will be rounded off to 40. 17 is rounded off to 20. Because it's closer to 20 than to 10, therefore it is rounded off to 20. Any, any number above 15 all the way up to 24 will be rounded off to 20. 98. 98 is between 95 and 104, therefore this will be rounded off to 100. So 98 is rounded off to 100 to the nearest 10 as well as to the nearest 100s. So we will see that later. 185 will be rounded off to 190 because 85 is closer to 90 than to 80. Therefore, if you consider 85 part of 185, you will be rounding off 85 to 90. Therefore, to the nearest 10, 185 will be rounded off to 190. Now, let's round off the numbers to nearest hundreds. So let's consider the hundreds on the number line 100, 200, 300, 400. So basically, you will be picking up 50 numbers on either side of each of these hundreds and they will be contributing to that particular hundred. Say for example, if you have 50 to 149, these hundred numbers will be rounded off to 100. Because they are on either side of 100 and they are closer to 100 than 200. And the numbers from 150 to 249, these hundred numbers are closer to 200, therefore they will be rounded off to 200. Similarly, a number which is 275, which is closer to 300, this will be rounded off to 300 to nearest 100. And another example, 340, this is closer to 300 than to 400 because it's less than 349. Up to 349, we will be rounding off to 300. So this will be rounded off to 300 as well. What will be the number 355 rounded off to nearest 100? This is closer to 400 than to 300 because it's more than 350. Therefore, this has to be rounded off to 400. So, 355 is approximately equal to 400 when you round it off to nearest 100. And again, let's check your understanding now. 
try to answer these questions by rounding them off to 100, nearest 100. Are you ready? 145. 145 is less than 149, which is closer to 100. Therefore, this will be rounded off to 100. 523. Where is it placed? It is above 500, but less than 549. Therefore, this is closer to 500 than to 600. Therefore, this is rounded off to 500. 983. This is above 950 and less than 1049. Therefore, this will be rounded off to 1000. The next hundreds after 983 is 1000. So, 983 is rounded off to 1000 when you want to round it off to nearest 100. I hope you understood up to this point. Let's proceed further with decimal approximation, which is most commonly used in practical forms. Let's consider this decimal number 7.154873. So, it's a huge decimal number. Let's consider and see how we can approximate to different decimal places. So, rounding off to one decimal place. If you want to round this off to one decimal place, you consider the second decimal place in this context, which is 5. If this number is greater than or equal to 5, you add 1 to the previous number and you stop there. Say for example, you have to write this as 7.1 and consider the next decimal number after the first decimal place, which is 5 here. Since this is more than 5, 5 and more than 5, you add 1 to the previous number, which makes it as 2. Therefore, the final answer rounding the number off to one decimal place will be 7.2. Let's round it off to two decimal places now. So, you have to consider the third decimal place. So, you have to write the number up to the third decimal place and look at the third decimal place number. This number is less than 5. Therefore, there is no change in the previous number. Therefore, we give the answer as 7.15. Don't call this as 7.15. It is 7.15. Let's round it off to 5 decimal places. So, what you need to do is write all the way up to the 5th decimal place and look at the number at the 5th decimal place. Sorry, the 6th decimal place. Look at the number at the 6th decimal place which is 3 which is less than 5. Therefore, there is no change in the number 7. Therefore, the number would be 7.15487. There is no change in the last 7 there because if it was 6 in the 6th decimal place, you would have changed it to 8. So, now there is no change. So, 7.15487. I hope you understood. Now, I am going to ask you to round it off to three decimal places. Are you ready? So, for three decimal places, you need to go all the way up to the fourth decimal place. In the question, the fourth decimal place has the number 8, which is more than 5. Therefore, the third decimal place number, which is 4, will be added up by one unit. So, 7.15487. 155 will be the final answer for rounding this off to 3 decimal place. So, round these off to the decimal places given here. Pause the video here, give the answers and check your answers again. Are you ready? 45.89. Again, I am insisting don't call this as 45.89. It is not 89, it is 89. So, 45. 0.89 to one decimal place. So, you are looking for the second decimal place which is 9 which is more than 5. Therefore, the 8 in the first decimal place will be increased by 1. So, to one decimal place 45.89 is approximately equal to 45.9. The next answer is 15.96. The second decimal place has number more than 5 which is 6 here. Therefore, 9 will be rounded off to 10. And that 10 will be added to 15 to make it as 16.0. You have to give the number 16.0 to show that you have rounded off the first decimal place from 9 to 0. The next is 1.304 to 2 decimal places. So, look at the third decimal place which we have 4 here. And therefore, there is no change in the second decimal place which is 0. So, the answer would be 1.30 to 2 decimal place. It is uh, important that you write the 0 in the last showing that you have rounded off from the third decimal place here. 7.496 rounding off to 2 decimal places. You can see that the third decimal place has a 6 here which is more than 5. Therefore, the 9 in the previous decimal place will become 0 
and the 4 in the previous decimal place will become 5. Therefore, the answer will be 7.5022 decimal place. And you can see that this is 7.5022 decimal places and you, I insist again to write the 0 in the end because it shows that you have rounded off some number to 50 here. If you are asked to give this answer in one decimal place, your answer will be 7.5. You don't need to put the zero in the end because you are showing that you are rounding it off to one decimal place. The next number is 0 0.995 to two decimal places. Looking at the third decimal place which is 5, it adds 1 to the previous number which is 9. So adding 1 to 9 it becomes 10 and the carryover of 1 is added to the previous 9 and again the carryover is added to the zero in the beginning. Therefore, the number here will be 1.00 to 2 decimal places, but you can also give it as 1.0 if you are rounding this off to 1 decimal place because the second decimal place is 9. So, I hope you understood the different types of numbers and different types of rounding offs here. And let's proceed further to significant figures. So, if you have a number like this, a huge number, the first number is the most significant figure. And the last number is the least significant figure. Whereas if you have a decimal number like this, after the decimal place, the first number is the most significant figure and the last number is the least significant figure. So in general, the significancy of the figures goes from left to right. So before the decimal, the most significant figure starts from the beginning and it goes to the right until the decimal places. And just after the decimal place, it again starts with most significant figure and goes on up to least significant figure. So this is the basic idea of significant figures. We will see some examples. 0 0.580043. In this case, this 0 is non-significant. It is It doesn't have any significance in the number. Whereas these two zeros, because they are in between two numbers, they are significant figures. 0 0.005843. So the number 0 in the beginning is not significant and the number after the decimal is also non significant but the first significant figure here is the 5. So that is the first significant digit 5843 the numbers the zeros before this is non significant and giving another example 10000 which is 10000 in this case which is the most significant figure the 1 and the zeros following are non significant. I will give you another example, 100100. So here again the first one is most significant, but the zeros here are significant, but the zeros here are not significant. So these zeros which are in the beginning of the numbers are called trailing zeros. These are the zeros that are called trailing zeros. So let's proceed further into examples of rounding off the following numbers to three significant figures. SF means significant figures. That's the short form for significant figures. We always write it as SF and three significant figures is the common representation in most of the examination boards. So I'm going to do only three significant figures here. So I'm going to give you some examples here and you're going to try them all and give the answers in three significant figures. So in order to do that, you are supposed to find the most significant figure, the first three significant figures in, in, in fact. And going to the fourth significant figure, you have to check whether it is more than 5 or not. If it is more than 5, you have to raise up the previous significant figure as you did for decimal places. So first of all, find out the first highest significant figure in these examples. Are you ready? So first of all, let's cut the part where you end the three significant figures. So in the first case, 2, 5, 6 are the first three significant figures, 5.72 in the second case. And in the third case, if you can see 3 is the first significant figure because the first three zeros are uh, trailing zeros. Therefore, 3 is the first significant figure, 3, 4, 5. So the third significant figure is 5. So you draw the line after that. In the fourth example, 1 is the leading number, 1.00, these two zeros are significant because they are in between two numbers. Therefore, 1.00 is the first three significant figures, 3 is the fourth significant figure here. 
The next example 3, 5, 9, 6, 7. So you can see that the 3 is the most significant figure and 7 is the least significant figure. Therefore, the first most 3 significant figures are 3, 5, 9. You draw the line after 9 here. And then look for the fourth significant figure. In the first case, the fourth significant figure is 8. Look at this number. If it is more than 5, you raise up the previous number by 1. Therefore, because it is 8, this 6 becomes 7 now. So, we write it as 257, but we don't miss the numbers. Instead of 872, we put 000. So, we are writing this 256,872 to three significant figures as 257,000. The remaining three numbers in the last dig two three digits are non-significant for us. Therefore, we bring them to 0 and we round it off to 257 in the first three significant figures. So, let's proceed for the next number. 5.7298 so if since the fourth significant figure is 9 we add 1 up to the 2 here therefore this becomes 7.5.73 and you don't need to put the zeros there because it is after decimal places it doesn't give you any values whereas in the previous case if you don't put the zeros 256,000 will become 257 and there is a huge difference in the actual value of the numbers. Therefore, you need to write the zeros when you are removing the other significant figures. In the next case, 0 0.345 and 6 is the next number which makes the 5 to 6 again. Therefore, this is 0 0.00346 and you can stop here. You don't need to write any zeros after this because it is after the decimal place. In the next case, it is 1.00 and the next number is 3640 and 3 is the number that you need to consider here. This is less than 5, therefore there is no change in the previous number. Therefore, this answer is 1.00. Don't write it as 1.0. We are showing that we are rounding it off to 3 significant figures and there are some numbers in the next figure which we have omitted. Going to the fifth example. 35967. So, 359 are the first three significant figures. 6 is the fourth significant figure and 7 is the next one. And we have five digits here. And it is a whole number. This 6 has to change the 359 to 360. And the 6, 7 part will be written as 0 and 0 again because this is a whole number. Therefore, rounding off 35,967 to three significant figures will be 36,000. Going back to real life situations, sometimes when you are measuring things at home, you don't need much precision. So, you might go in for one decimal place or two significant figures or sometimes three significant figures. You don't need any decimal places at some points. But when you are measuring longer distances or bigger measurements, you might need to go for two or three decimal places as shown here, which will give you more accuracy. And when you are measuring things at lab, you might need to be much more precise and say for example, if you are measuring in milligrams, you might want to measure it in micrograms, which means you might need three decimal places. Whereas in space sciences and rocket sciences, there are different measurements taken and different units are considered. So as you change your units, you might need different accuracies. If you are interested in knowing more about how things are measured in space, visit ganitika.com. Under Curious Corner page, you have an article on distances measured in space. Here, you will be discussing about different units of measurements in space. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, please subscribe to this channel, like and share my videos with your friends and relatives. Thank you very much.